surfing in Aberdeen, yeah, pretty cold. It seemed like centuries ago when the monks crossed the mountain to Malibu, El Camino, and a sip and tea lemonade room. My name's Catherine Johnson. I first came to Aberdeen in 2013 uh, as a very young art school student and studied here for four years. And Aberdeen holds on to me way longer than everyone thinks. Everyone says that though about Aberdeen, somehow keeps you here. Aberdeen is home for now, uh, even on Home on Wheels. I get to paint and surf and climb. What more could you want? Nothing's, it's not that glamorous, but it's so good to see the waves when you wake up. It was an experience in Panama, living really close to nature for three weeks on a painting residency that made me realise that if I'm to make work about nature and being in nature, then I really should follow my own advice a little bit more and spend a life connected to nature. I started van life uh, halfway through the first lockdown and at that point in time, I think I didn't expect it to go on for another year and a half, but it made me feel like I was getting some adventure back. And it's not always perfect, it doesn't always work well, but feeling like I can breathe and move around and be immediately outside is something that I don't think anyone will take for granted after COVID. A lot of parts of van life just keep you grounded um, in the same way that surfing does. It keeps you grounded to the seasons and the weather and much more connected than you would in a regular city life. The first time I surfed was three years ago. Surfing was something I'd always wanted to try. My parents actually got me a surf lesson with Campbell from Scott Surf. Started in 2017, um, it was a horse box. It was basically out the back of the van to start with. I do surfing and paddleboarding. Surfing was my initial start. Paddleboarding, I picked up qualifications or reinvested in qualifications I had because we had, I think, a 10 week spell of no waves at all in the summertime. So as a business, I was a bit like, ooh, this could be a worry. And the paddleboarding has picked up. It's brilliant to see. It's a total different experience with that as well. Me actually surfing, I was 18 years old and uh, a friend gave me a shot of a surfboard when I was windsurfing. And I had broken my windsurfer and he said, try my surfboard. And I stood up first time and I've never not surfed. So that was the main part of the hobby while also playing rugby. And now as a business, yeah, 2017 is when it all kicked off. Just one of those what ifs. Didn't want to have a what if in my life. Yeah, scary moment, without a doubt. It's just trusting it. Just, I had to trust it. Everyone's worried about the mortgage and being able to pay things, but I would say don't. I say it's, uh, it will come, it will always come, you'll always get it. It's just thinking about lifestyle, thinking about what your happiness has got to be. So that's how I've looked at it and I've got to keep on remembering that. I keep on having the times when it's quiet and the season's an off season. It's actually the best time for me to go and surf personally. And that's what I, I like. I used to lecture at university and I now lecture with the surfing and the paddleboarding. So it's that, it's nice to still be in that sort of environment doing that taking people out when they get a good experience. I don't want to take someone out for a lesson when it's flat or there's not many waves you can catch. Same when it's paddleboarding, I don't want the wind to be blowing you about. So it's got to be super safe to start with. But seeing people's reaction from them catching the first wave or being able to stand on the paddleboard, that's a great buzz. It was really big waves. It was up by the beach ballroom. And the other two people in the lesson had already surfed before and Campbell went to teach me a few basics on the sand before getting in and then was like hey never mind I'll just teach you in the water um, and they were really big waves like I now think about the waves that I'm comfortable in now uh, and I do remember them probably being close to that limit um, and the one wave that I caught that day I had my eyes closed so I didn't even realize that I had caught it until Campbell was like get up and then I realized I was actually surfing it all the way into shore 
and just like it was a great feeling. No more sunny days, no more sunny days. I got a heart that won't behave. I got a mind gonna make me insane. I'm Kat Stoddart. I'm Rosie Payne. We followed each other on Instagram for and ages. Then you posted on the surf chat that I was going to go surfing and then we met at the beach. Realised how much we had in common. <laughs> and we've been Kat went to school with my boyfriend, yeah. so <laughs> we know each other roughly. I started surfing middle of summer 2020. I actually had a lesson with Campbell. I uh, got a surfboard and that was me in the water constantly. I found the water like really, really therapeutic. Surfing obviously was really, really fun, but it was also just being at the beach, being in the water, being around people who had, you know, we all had a common interest. So I actually learned in the North coast of Devon um, and we used to go down with my dad in the summer when we were kids. My dad basically just chucked us on a board and was like, let's go surfing and learn how to do it. And I also grew up in New Zealand so like my cousins lived on the west coast of the North Island in Taranaki so they were always kind of doing surf life saving and surfing. Wavy Wahinis, Aberdeen was kind of like formed off of the basis of like, we obviously are competent in the water and like that's kind of our second home now. But we know that there are a lot of women who necessarily probably want to get in the water more, yeah. but don't have don't have the confidence. The confidence it. or they're too anxious, they don't know much about the water, or they don't know surf etiquette or anything like that. And they're just starting out, but there's no one for them to go to talk about surfing with. And I think that's why we wanted to start something up here as well. We want to just help the community. I think. Yeah, Aberdeen Beach has always been a kind of safe haven for me. I actually first started coming down because I was able to see the stars at night. And because I grew up in the countryside, I really, really missed being able to see the stars. I'd come down in the evening, listen to the water, just look at the stars, and then that kind of obviously evolved over time into me actually going into the water, into me going surfing. Um, and in the last couple of years, I've just found being in the water, it's honestly like a therapy session for me. And there's been so many times <laughs> where I've not been having you know, a great day and rather than staying in bed, I'll just come down and even if there's no waves, I'll just take my board and I'll go into the water and I'll just, I'll just be in the water. And there's been a good few times that I've been crying and I've been like, is this, are these my tears? <laughs> are these, tears. Is, this, is this salt water? I'm not sure. I moved up here for uni. Um, actually, I'd never seen Aberdeen before I moved up, which was probably a bit silly. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> it's actually turned into one of the places that I can probably call home.
everyone knows everyone and it's such a little community and it's so so wholesome and so lovely and I just I'm always like oh it's so vibey and that's <laughs> and I absolutely love that. It's a community that is based on like-minded people and everyone's always going to be around but it's not one of those ones it exists organically you know it's not people come and people go people stop surfing here people get new jobs um but everyone's, someone's always around for a chat, and someone's always around to chat waves. It's a pretty friendly, vibrant place to come down to. There's sometimes we've got a, a bit of an issue in Aberdeen where no one speaks in the surf unless you know them. So if someone new comes to Aberdeen, they don't get spoken to, or it's just a quick hello. If you know other people in the water, then you know it's you can chat and it's great. If you don't know them, there is kind of this weird kind of feeling. It's a bit like awkward. I think, like for me especially, Surfing's always kind of been like a traditional thing that people pass down information to you. Mm -hmm. Like whether you're a newbie or like a seasoned veteran, I don't know. Like. Yeah. I think one time we had in lockdown 138 surfers at one point in this small area, which when you look at Cornwall's not that many, but when it's this break, it's an awful lot. So don't worry about that. There's a pretty friendly bunch, they're pretty decent. And etiquette is the biggest thing. Know your rules. We don't have rules in surfing, there shouldn't be rules in surfing, but there is etiquette in surfing. And it just, it, it lets you know what you should be doing in the, on the waves. That's for all things, for kayakers, paddleboarders, kite surfers, foilers, all have a little bit of respect for each other in the water. I don't think I've ever been felt uncomfortable in the water. You kind of know your place, you know, you get the locals who are great here, like their waves and their space because they're fantastic in what they do. But I've also never felt like I shouldn't be in the water, um, which is quite a common thing in surfing, that kind of uh, um, hierarchy. It's a strange thing that sometimes that shouldn't be a part of surfing, you know? And I would understand it if I had surfed for 20 years and wanted the wave, then fair enough. But it shouldn't be that no one feels uncomfortable to try or to be out there. The space that I had when I was learning to surf, I want to be able to give that to other people. Yeah. Um, I know that I'm quite comfortable in the water. Um, Definitely got a long way to go in terms of surfing, but in terms of actually being in the water, I'm quite I'm quite confident, and I want to be able to help. I want to give that space to somebody else, because um, that's life changing. Like mm -hmm. I've done projects in the past where I've interviewed people for things, and the stories you hear from people who are in the water is just phenomenal about mm -hmm. how much it's changed their life. Yeah. Like totally. The tough one before the pandemic. You can be thinking about anything. Um, you can be in a, I, I don't want to say a dark place, but it is kind of like that. It's, uh, you can have something on your mind. If you go in for a surf and you have a good surf, you come out with an absolute buzz, just total exhilaration. It's like exercising, but there's just something slightly different about going for a surf. And it's, it sounds like a cliche, only a surfer knows. And that's, it's just something you can't tell people about until they feel it, but for, the brain, it just gives you this happiness, total happiness. It gave me so much, um, so much of a community here during a lockdown, um, but also so much mentally, uh, that when the lockdown lifted, there was like no way I was going back. I've gone through rough patches in my life and being near the water or in the sea is definitely a different type of headspace that I've got anywhere else. I miss it from rugby. Contact rugby used to give me that release. Um, because you would harness everything for the week. If anyone tried to argue with you, you would have it in your head for that week. And you get rid of it in the pitch on the Saturday. So God help anyone opposite me when I was like that on a rugby field. But surfing wise, I don't need that full on contact now. And I've realized I can transfer that emotion into surf and it can be super enjoyable. It's one of those sports similar to climbing um, where you can't really think of anything else. Whilst you're in it and whilst you're doing it, you're thinking about which wave you're going to hit next or which one you're going to take or how tired you are or how much you have left in you. You don't think about the life or stresses that you have on land. You just get this moment of, oh, I'm actually, I can just relax. Um, because all I need to focus on is what are the waves doing? Whereabouts, what's, what position am I in? When I went out into the water in Aberdeen, you immediately feel so disconnected from the city. And that's like a weird thing to say when we're talking about Aberdeen and loving surfing, but out there is completely different. But it, it's, it's almost like you just kind of get a pause on life. you 
you'll jump in, you have a session, and then you come back out, and it's like your whole life's been reset. Yeah. And that sounds like theatrical and dramatic, oh, but like but that's so literally true. what it feels like. <laughs> like. I think there's a commitment that this surfing culture has. Like, if it was Hawaii or somewhere warm, it'd be almost easier for everyone to get in. You know, there'd be less people bowing out, and it means the people on the water really want to be there. Back in the years gone by, in the 70s, 60s, 70s, there was hundreds of people. You couldn't walk down the beachfront. It's starting to pick up to that again. Not maybe that amount of people, but why not? And what have we not invested in? We've got a seriously good asset here for Aberdeen. I mean, with the amount of things that have been built around the surf school every day, there's new things arriving. It's getting very busy at the beachfront, which is fantastic to get people outdoors. Right, let's make it better then. Let's make it safer. Let's make it somewhere we want to come to. I wish more people in Aberdeen understood what they had on their doorstep. The way we've got Aberdeen, we're lucky, really lucky. You can access the sea in many different ways. You see this little band of people that are chasing something just a bit more exciting, you know, to their day-to-day -day life. If you don't try, you'll never know the outcome. You never know what you're going to experience or find at the end of it. Book a lesson, just give it a go, then stick with it. I think it took me three months to actually stand up on a board consistently. There's no boundaries of who can do it and whatever. Just go for it and see what happens. Ask advice before you get down here. Seek a, a professional or an expert to get you in there. Um, but by all means, get stuck in. It's probably one of the best things you'll do. It's cheap. It's, it's a free place to go if you've got your own kit. You don't have to book a facility. It's always there. Make use of it. And it's all year round. I mean, there's been mornings I've been down here at 6 o'clock and I've seen the wet bandits have had 120 people in their swimming trunks going in for a, a duke. Plus Swim Free Aberdeen. Plus surfers. Plus kiteboarders. Plus windsurfers. Plus stand-up paddleboarders. There's a lot. Go for it, just do it. Mama said what you want to be when you grow up Doesn't matter that much as long as you're tough Mama said what you want to be when you grow up Doesn't matter that much as long as you're tough You gotta be